Hello. Welcome to the Judge Ben Show. My name is Ben Joseph. I'm a retired Vermont Superior Court judge. And this is one of a series of interviews that I've been doing about the issues that concern the, the Vermont courts, specifically now the criminal courts. My guest today is uh, Officer Tom Nash, who is the uh, director of the Chittenden Unit for Special Investigations, often referred to as CUSI, C-U-S-I, its initials. Tom, uh, what is CUSI? Uh, CUSI is the Chittenden Unit for Special Investigations, as you said, which is a uh, task force consisting of detectives from around the county uh, dealing specifically with crimes of a sexual nature, uh, severe child abuse, as well as infant fatality investigations. Oh my. And I take it you are an off you're, you're, a, you're a Burlington police officer, is that correct? I'm a, a sergeant, uh, detective sergeant with the Burlington Police Department uh, per Cousy bylaws, which uh, Cousy has been in existence now for over 28 years. Wow. Um, next, next spring, uh, spring of 2021 will be the 30 year anniversary for Cousy. Um, but as part of the bylaws, the director is typically uh, appointed from uh, Burlington Police Department, a, a, a detective sergeant from Burlington Police Department, yes. And um, does, so do you handle complaints of, about cases like this from all the towns in Chittenden County? Yes, the uh, cooperation was that uh, we're a uh, countywide task force consist, like I said, consisting of there's seven detectives, two from Burlington, uh, one from Colchester, UVM, uh, South Burlington, and like I said, two from Burlington, Vermont State Police and Essex Police Department and myself. And you supervise those people? Yes. Good job. Um, in an average year, how many cases do you uh, investigate? Um, hard to say, depending on the uh, time, but uh, like I said, probably about right now, we're probably up to about three, 300, maybe. How many? Roughly. About 300, roughly. Wow. Wow. And now I know this isn't a typical year <laughs> because of uh, COVID and the courts, and I, that, I could do a whole show about that, I suppose. But uh, in a typical year, how many cases w would would you be preparing for trial? Um, of it's it's again, it depends. Every every case is unique, um, and that's the purpose of uh, of Cousy's inception and existence over the last uh, almost three decades now. Uh, but each case is different. Uh, so, as far as sending to trial, it, it's it's they're based on individual. Uh, assessments and whether or not uh, the people involved want to go to trial, um, being that it is very personal, it is a um, uh, traumatic crime that, uh, so of an answer to your question, I would say approximately, probably less than 50% actually make it to court. And how have the recent delays in the court system affected your work? Uh, quite dramatically in the sense of that uh, as far as uh, just just the interaction with with folks uh, with with victims with uh, witnesses suspects um, the interaction being that this is such a unique uh, type of uh, type of crime that it's very personable so I, it's hard when we can't get face to face with someone and offer them the services that we need. Um, as far as the numbers, I don't think there had been any drastic changes either way, either pro or negative um, in, in, the, in the number. Uh, one of the things that uh, we have uncovered though, or not, not uncovered, but um, with some, uh, D we, we work very closely with DCF uh, in conjunction with them. It's uh, the Department of Children and Families? Correct. Okay. Uh, there has been a, a noticeable increase in the last two, three months for uh, cases involving children that DCF is also uh, in, involved in. And I, I'm not sure if that's based on the, uh, the schools being closed uh, since last March and uh, children not having a safe place to disclose um, if, if, their, if their home life is uh, 
is not uh, suitable or or is not a safe place. Uh, a lot of places that children will disclose are schools, uh, activities, after school programs, things like that. Well, um, has there been any uh, decline in the number, uh, any effect on the number of cases of uh, sexual assault that are reported to you? Um, like I said, I wouldn't see that I, I I'd have to run the numbers more specifically, but no, nothing, um, nothing drastically, nothing drastic in either direction. No. But I gather that some of these, some of these complaints may come to you from other organizations like the Vermont Network Against Domestic Violence and Voices Against Violence and those, those groups? Absolutely. Uh, Hope Works, the hospital, uh, a number of uh, community uh, agencies out there helping to reduce sexual violence. We get a lot of referrals from yes. And do you work with them and uh, trying to work with the victims? Yes, that that is the overall goal of Kuzi is a multidisciplinary approach. Um, that it's a little being that the nature of these crimes are sensitive. Uh, they're very traumatic. They're personal. Uh, we work try to work very closely with uh, other agencies um, in support of victims. Mm -hmm. Well, um, and uh, everywhere from the hospital to. Well, I, I, I realize a lot of these cases don't go to trial, but th those that do go to trial, I gather you're working with those organizations to support the victims and witnesses. Absolutely. Uh, one of the things that we have is in our office that I didn't mention, in addition to the detectives, uh, law enforcement detectives, there is a we have a dedicated victim advocate from oh. the Chittenden County State's Attorney's Office. Mm -hmm. uh, she works solely for our office, and she uh, it works tremendously um, with with victims that come in, or even alleged victims as when they come in for initial interview, um, and then that she works them with them throughout the process uh, when it when it even even prior to going to court, uh, and then certainly during court and after court. Well, I think it's a, that before going to court is a critical time. Well, what, what are the delays in cases getting to, to trial? I mean, what I gather now is that nothing's going to trial. Is that right? No, they've uh, slowly started to open up. Um, the, the caseload obviously has, has not changed. We're, we're still getting the same caseloads and the same numbers of referrals. The, there is obviously a backup uh, because courts have, for actual court cases, just because for months the court had been closed or there had been modified schedules, things like that. But the, the courts are slowly opening up a little bit more. I know one of my detectives... Uh, just last week had a uh, motion to suppress hearing uh, that she appeared in person in the courthouse for. Well, these, these, these cases are, uh, in my experience, as uh, both a judge and a public defender, these cases are uh, often very difficult. And I, I gather that some of these organizations that refer people to you, like, like the Vermont Network and Voices Against Violence and these people, they help the victims get things like relief from abuse orders. Is that right? Everything from uh, relief of abuse orders, potentially uh, a, a new place to stay, uh, residential oh. in case uh, that uh, the current or their, someone's current residence is not safe uh, for whatever reason. Um, uh, another one is Hope Works uh, is, is another agency that works very closely, uh, that we work closely with. Um, but yes. Uh, the, the main goal of Kuzi is to help the victims. Help the victims. Um, so do you work with the Children's Advocacy Center? We do. We uh, actually share, we share space in, here in Burlington. So we work very closely with them. And what is their mission? Their mission is similar, um, that they're civilian. It's not law enforcement, but right. uh, based off of the uh, National Children's Advocacy Center out of Huntsville, uh, Huntsville, Alabama, their main goal is to help uh, with uh, provide services, counseling, uh, resolution for children of crime. Um, and it can run the gamut. We specifically, being that it's with the Kuzi office, um, that we get mostly uh, children, uh, victims of uh, sexual abuse um, and uh, obviously uh, physical abuse. 
So their main goal is to help those children and their families uh, make it through this process. Like you said, the court process can be pretty daunting at times. Well, the, particularly with these delays, I think these delays are just, uh, I guess in some sense it's unavoidable considering the, uh, what I call the plague, <laughs> but it's, it's, it must be so difficult for people to spend months waiting for some kind of resolution. I think they need support from organizations like the ones you've mentioned, you know, HopeWorks and Vermont Network. These people are very, very important to this process, it seems to me. Um, what does CUSI do to promote public awareness of your mission? Do you reach out to the organizations? Do you tell people who have complaints about this kind of conduct to contact you? I'm sorry, I think, um, I, I don't know if it's, uh, my internet cut out a little bit. Can you just rephrase that? Or... Oh, I'm sorry. Well, um, uh, maybe I stumbled. I, I, I'm just asking, what, 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 is, what do you do to promote public awareness of your mission? Do you, do you reach um, out to voices or network or hope works and, and tell them to send these people to you? Well, absolutely. Uh, that's okay. they, they're, they're being the, the advantage in this area in Chittenden County is uh, we're a relatively small community. Uh, so knowing uh, all these agencies are familiar with what Koozie is, what we do, and the Children's Advocacy Center, uh, even to the point of once a month, we have what's called a multi multidisciplinary team meeting where all the agencies get together um, to discuss issues that pertain to this type of crime um, and where each agency can be of, of assistance. And you, do you talk about individual cases and how they can be handled? Uh, generally, we will pick one case. Obviously, we keep names um, oh, well, and for, for confidentiality reasons, but yes, uh, we will discuss um, specific, not specifics, but generalities of a case that is either being investigated, was investigated, there was an arrest made, and then kind of from start to finish, what can every agency do to help this victim as well as their families? And uh, what is the sexual assault response team? Such a are you talking about the hospital or for uh, law enforcement? Law enforcement, please. Well, we can do both, but we'll start with law enforcement. Well, it, it's it's just that, that uh, being that uh, sexual assault does not follow a, a, a specific timeline um, and our agency isn't, we're, we're only eight, eight law enforcement. So we rely heavily on uh, other agencies, other mm -hmm. law enforcement agencies as first responders. Right. Uh, while Koozie is a t technically a 24 hour, seven day a week agency, um, it's uh, detectives aren't working 24 hours, seven days a week. Um, so the response team is uh, there are uh, individual officers at each station who are trained as sexual assault first responders. So if someone were to report a uh, sexual assault, uh, ideally uh, to uh, or to their local agency. Um, that ideally one of these trained officers will respond to deal with the initial interview, to secure any crime scenes, uh, any evidence that might be uh, fleeting or exigent, and then uh, they would contact Kuzi. Um, there's always a Kuzi detective on call, 24 hours, seven days a week, uh, for consult, and any sort of emergency or exigent situation, uh, Kuzi will respond to the scene. That, so you send that, someone to the scene if, if there's an- Absolutely, depending on the circumstances. It has to happen. Yes. And what, you know, I've, I've heard a lot of commentary recently about uh, officers carrying uh, cameras, carrying, you know, they can take pictures at the scene. Right. I th thought of you when, when I heard this, I thought that the QC people go out and take pictures of battered victims. Does that ever happen? We do. Uh, it's it's a good evidentiary uh, information for the case, um, as, as I'm sure you've seen when you were sitting on the bench, um, especially when it comes to bruises. It's uh, they, they do change over time. Uh, mm -hmm. but you want to get you want to basically as a good criminal investigation, you want to document what the scene looks what, what the scene is. And it's our job um, as sort of reactionary is to sort of rebuild that scene. 
um, so we can establish that there was probable cause that a crime has been committed, is, was, or will be committed. Um, so pictures are, are huge. Obviously, uh, they have to remain confidential um, just because of the nature, especially when we're dealing with children. Um, and th those uh, we're, we're very cautious of the types of uh, pictures that, that are taken and um, presented. In my experience, there are times when the pictures taken two or three days later are even yeah. more indicative than the ones taken at the, at the moment of the assault. Absolutely. And that's both in any sort of assault uh, case. Uh, the initial photos are important, but there is always follow up. Uh, three days, four days, a week later, because the bruises will change dramatically and even become almost, it's hard to think this, but even become worse as, as the healing process. Or like I said, it's the healing process or it's still in the uh, abuse uh, or the, the damaging process. But by the time police arrive. I know in my experience, I've, I've had a few cases where people have come back to me long after the, the event frankly, to thank me for whatever I did in regard to the case and to tell me that they're no longer being assaulted and that there's been a, a very good effect. Do you ever get that kind of feedback? We do. Um, obviously, it's uh, the main goal of this is for the protection and the prevention of, uh, of, of sexual violence. Uh, law enforcement in general, uh, for the protection and uh, prevention of crime and abuse, the obviously uh, domestic abuse, sexual abuse is is a vicious cycle um, through generations, and somewhere in there there needs to be that uh, breaking of that cycle. Hopefully, uh, in 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 some of our cases, I can't say it's a hundred percent, unfortunately, uh, but hopefully with law enforcement and specifically Kuzi, that cycle is broken um, of sexual violence, and uh, people can resolve and hopefully live a pretty pretty normal life with normal being as best as you can define that. So by cycle, you mean that these victims are repeatedly assaulted? In, in some circumstances, yes. Um, that just due to uh, the nature of, of their environment, their prior histories, prior uh, sexual victimization, um, it, it's tough to, to break that cycle without help. But the same victim can be repeatedly assaulted. Yes. Over time, it's, become, it's a pattern of conduct. Correct. So we try to uh, break that victimization cycle. And you try to break it by, by prosecuting uh, offenders. By prosecuting, um, but also, like I said, for, from, a, from a law enforcement standp uh, standpoint, it's the investigation of the crime. And then in conjunction with the state's attorney's office, and uh, we, the state's attorney's office has one dedicated uh, deputy state's attorney um, that we, she, uh, she only handles uh, koozie investigations and cases and arraignments. Um, so that's, she's part of this, our uh, MDDT team, that's a mouthful. Multiple uh, disciplinary team? Yes. Um, so, so she is- I stumble over that one a lot of times. <laughs> yeah, so MDT team. Yeah. MDT. Um, so she's a part of that as well. And like, as I said, some of these cases uh, go to trial, some don't just dependent upon um, the, the circumstances. But ultimately, if it's the right decision not to go to trial, but it might to not necessarily go to trial, but it's the right decision for the victim and the victim can resolve and and uh, and be, be see some closure, uh, even without necessarily going to court. I once had a case before me in which it was called to trial, and the uh, victim uh, couldn't talk, mm -hmm. could not speak. So the attorney suggested that they would do a deferred uh, sentence. There'd be an admission, and it would be, we wouldn't, I could, wouldn't punish the guy. He would be uh, put on notice that he can't do this kind of thing. Right. And lo and behold, three months later, he did a very serious rape. And um, this, this was a case in which the victim uh, you know, took the stand and, and wept, wept and wept, but managed to go through the whole thing and describe it all. And there was a conviction. And um, that was a good result. 
you know, it was a good result. These, the thing that is always, you know, I find troubling is that every one of these cases, as you describe it, is unique to its facts. You know, uh, the court, a judge is supposed to consider the four factors from the common law and up to eight other factors from statutes <laughs> in doing the sentence. And each case is, 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 is difficult and it's a very complicated job, both for investigators, prosecutors, defense counsel, and the judge. These are very difficult things. Um, but I, I thank you for what you're doing. I think this is so important. It really can, uh, you can save people's lives. You can make a big difference to them. Not just the adult victims, but the children. My goodness, to think that these things happen. It's, it's really very sobering. How, do you find that some of the people you work with need their own kind of counseling because it's so troublesome? There is definitely vicarious trauma. Uh, in, in all law enforcement, uh, particularly when dealing with uh, cases such as this nature, that uh, the whole purpose of the unit was started uh, because these cases do involve, they're, they're very sensitive, they're very complex, um, they, they require a little, little extra attention, a little extra that, that maybe wouldn't otherwise be available in, in a larger department uh, where you just sort of get in the queue. So as far as the investigators are concerned, absolutely. Um, uh, mental health with uh, investigators is a huge um, uh, part of, 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 any, of this job to make sure that the investigators are able to do their work. Um, to That's your responsibility, the right. health of these people. And the CAC, you mentioned the CAC is yeah. also very pivotal in that um, they, they provide some funding for uh, mental for um, uh, investigator mental health awareness, and that can be anything from just yeah, if if it gets to that point, uh, setting up some counseling, uh, even some money to uh, uh, to to spend on a gym membership because gym memberships are just, it's, while it might not solve the problem, but it, it definitely helps alleviate some of the stressors. stressors. Get on that treadmill. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so yes, and to answer your question, the, this type of work 24 seven constantly, and even to the certain extent, uh, I'm very concerned and keep, keep an eye on my detectives to make sure that they are not losing sight of, of their job and that, um, that, that they don't get, get themselves into, uh, like I said, some vicarious trauma, which would be very difficult to, to get out of. That's very sobering, very sobering. Well, do you need any additional resources? Is there anything else you need that would help you do the job better? Um, I think just awareness is, is, the, mo is the most important that people, the, like I said, these types of crimes typically have gone unnoticed. They've gone um, sort of, I want to say ignored, but they're, they're tricky, uh, especially when it comes to sexual relationships. Mm -hmm. uh, that just because someone's in a sexual relationship doesn't necessarily mean that they're not victims. Um, so I think the biggest issue is awareness that there is sexual violence in our community. Um, it is prevalent, unfortunately, um, and that it's it's okay to tell somebody. That would be prevalent. Thing. You mean there's a lot of it going on? I I think so. Uh, in in any crime statistics, the the actual crime number is going to be less than than reality. Uh, just oh, I think that's particularly true in these cases. Absolutely, because a lot of people don't report that they're victims, or they oh, don't. I, I know people who haven't reported for years. Right. I know those cases. And uh, being that the statute of limitations when it comes to these types of crimes are, are fairly broad. Um, there are some sexual assaults depending on ages and things like that, but certainly within the, uh, within the last 20 years, the statute of limitations for these crimes have been uh, wide, uh, widened. Quite, quite so if there's a sexual abuse of a child, what's the statute of limitations in that? There is none. Oh. Um, I think depending, well, I should, let me rephrase that. Um, I want to, I think it goes back to like 1980, the crime, like back in the eighties. So certainly someone who's an adult, who uh, a, a child in the eighties uh, would certainly qualify to make a report and uh, an investigation will be done. I can't, I can't 
uh, foresee the outcome, but certainly uh, there is uh, the opportunity to for a five-year-old, 10-year-old, 20-year-old's assault to be investigated. Well, particularly, you know, I can just imagine a 12-year-old girl who wouldn't want to talk about this. It could be something that would be a, a wound that would carry through her whole life. Her whole life, yes, without, without dealing with it, without resolve, and some sort of resolution. And that's what he talked about, some, some, a lot of that re-victimization as well, not understanding uh, what happened to them as a 12-year-old uh, could put them potentially in a, in a higher risk for to be victimized again. This is such difficult work. I really, <laughs> I can't thank you enough. This is really something to, 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 to brood over. I'm just hoping that by doing this, by doing this interview, by putting this out on the, on the television, that people will be, uh, who are in this problem as, as victims, will reach out to try to get help it, from Kusi or from, you any, know. Anyone, <laughs> whether yeah. it be law enforcement, the hospital, um, I, we, we talk to students in, in schools all the time and say it, it doesn't find someone you can trust, uh, an, a trusted adult, if, 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 as far as when it comes to kids, find someone you can trust because holding it in never helps. Keeping it a secret, secrets are debilitating. Uh, so if, if, you, if someone is the victim of a crime, it's important that they are able to feel comfortable to reach out to someone, be it a, be it a teacher, a coach, uh, who, whomever, that, that's probably the most important. And at least there's an awareness of it and an acknowledgement that uh, this person has, is a victim. Wow, wow. Well, is, uh, is there anything else you'd like to add, sir? Um, no, just like I said, it's uh, people just need to be aware, uh, keep your eyes open. Um, know, know your friends, know your family. You, they, people know, you know your friends and family the best. If you think maybe something's wrong, chances are something probably is. And don't be afraid to ask. And if they get a response, then they should try to help get support for the person? Or? As best as they can, whatever support that might be, uh, to reach out to lo local law enforcement, to reach out to counseling, uh, Hope Works, uh, Vermont Internet, uh, or, or not Internet, uh, Vermont Network. Yeah. Um, well, <clears throat> a website here I, in a second. I didn't want to miss the chance to ask you about uh, um, the direction of this. Is this thing, are things going, even in this business for a while, is, is there any sense that things are getting better or are people more likely to report now than they did in the past? I think, generally speaking, absolutely. Um, that that awareness right now is is the biggest, or I should say, the lack of awareness was the big, biggest obstacle facing people 10, 20, 30, 40 years ago. Uh, now, uh, sexual violence is not something that is 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 kept in the basement or or, or hidden anymore. Uh, people are aware that it does happen, um, and more people are willing to come forward and make it make 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 it aware to to, to for people and there are agencies now um, like the vermont network against sexual and domestic violence uh Cousy, hope works uh the cac that are out there their whole purpose is to make sure that there's someone there to listen the cac is the children's advocacy center children's advocacy center yes we all speak in uh <laughs> You all speak in initials now. It's part of the part of modern law enforcement work. Well, Tom, I want to thank you very much. I I often tell people that it, the interviews I do are from thirty minutes to an hour, and thirty minutes is much better. In fact, the only person who ever went more for more than an hour was a judge. <laughs> I I couldn't shut her up. <laughs> we went on and on and on. But thank you again. And uh, if you ever want to come back and talk about something, you let me know. We'll do. Thank you. We'll put you back on the Judge Ben Show. I appreciate it. I appreciate okay. it. Thank you, Tom. Thank you very much for your time. Okay. Thank you, Judge.